This conference will now be recorded. Thank you very, very much. Woohoo! And it looks like we have 138 of us here. Come on, 140. Do I hear 141? All right, I think that people will begin joining us as we proceed. We'll give it one or two more minutes. So by a show of hands, when you're going to join a meeting like this, how many of you will say, I'm going to hop online? Anyone else say, I'm going to hop online? Okay, am I the only? Oh, good, I've got others. Because then I get this little image like I'm Peter Cottontail running down the rabbit trail, ready to jump onto a Zoom call because I'm hopping online. All right, so more people are joining and we're waiting for some. I can see a list of we're waitings. Okay, can you guys hear me? Give me a thumbs up and we'll kick off. Oh, my page has become unresponsive. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I am. Here, and then we can switch slides. All right. It's working. Okay. So they can see you. Yeah, they need to be able to see you. Yeah. Yeah, come on in here. Let's switch slides. No, I don't hear. So I don't need my kids. That's a good idea. I'm on mute, man. Yeah. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Sorry, my, my uh, technical difficulties on my computer. So Jessica and I will be sharing. And welcome to everybody. And um, 
If you don't mind, if you mute, uh, it will help in terms of any feedback. And I hope everyone is well. Uh, if you celebrate Easter or Passover, I hope you had a wonderful Easter, a wonderful Passover. Um, uh, we're going to start at the beginning. And so the beginning today is talking about uh, vaccinations. I know most of you haven't heard much about that. Not. So um, let me tell you where we are with vaccinations. Um, uh, one, if you haven't yet had the chance to fill out the survey, uh, please do so. It's important that we know where our staff as a whole stand. Uh, remember, it's anonymous. We're, you know, we're not looking to know what each of you is doing individually. We just want to know because here's the deal. I'll tell you flat out, we are striving for 100% vaccination. And um, we're doing that, I think, for some very, very good reasons. Um, uh, one, we know that there's a, uh, a, a strong message from the National Head Start Association. Hang on, Ms. Janice. Hold on just a moment, guys. Okay. No, they couldn't hear me. Can you guys hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can. No. Thank you. So they have, um, Sorry? Huh? Hey, guys, if you're not muted, <laughs> please mute. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, I'm not sure where it dropped off. Uh, is that clear? Can you hear me better now? Okay, the reason we have an echo, folks, I can see is because there are callers on the line who have not muted. So I'm just going to pause while you check your phone or your computer, and I'm going to ask you to please mute. Thank you guys, I can see it happening. Excellent, you guys, thank you so much. Makes it much easier, is that better folks? Okay, sorry for the frustration of uh, the Zoom calls, but this is where we are in today's world. And this is a compelling reason why we are shooting for 100% vaccination, because with 100% vaccination, one of the things that will happen is we will be able to all come back together for in-services, which would be just fantastic. National Head Start Association is running a major campaign pushing for vaccination. And I want you to know that the leadership team, that Jessica, Kathleen, and I all support that. Again, if you didn't hear me before, there's an anonymous survey. We have responses back from about three quarters of you. And if you could let us know. Okay, somebody needs to mute. Please take a look at your computer or your phone. And if you're not muted, please push mute. Okay, it's just one person I think that's causing the feedback. Here's the thing, and this is really a bottom line in terms of the vaccination. We need to protect our children. We need to protect our families and we need to protect each other. There are some people who believe that children may not get the coronavirus, or if they do, it'll just be very mild. And while that's the case for many kids, not all of them. All of you know, just as well as I do, that we have a certain number of children who are immunocompromised. And we have to make a decision as a staff. 
Are we going to choose to not get vaccinated and tell those children they can't be in our program? Or are we going to fulfill our mission by saying, we will do the right thing. We will protect our children. We will protect each other. Because here's the thing, even if we don't worry about a child, and we should be, if there's a positive exposure, and that child has to quarantine because of one of us, that child's gonna lose 14 days of education. <laughs> Can you guys hear me again? Just give me a thumbs up. Thank you. We know there are concerns about the vaccination. There's a lot of bad information out there. And that bad information is being spread by people who really have bad intentions. It's just that simple. There is not a great conspiracy of medical professionals in this country who are saying, let's put people at risk. The studies around these vaccinations, while having moved quickly, have met all the FDA protocols. The reality is that rates of infection and hospitalization in those areas where people are getting vaccinated are coming down. The reality is there's an opportunity to protect ourselves. And if you have concerns, let's talk about those concerns. It's important. It's important to be well informed and to make the right decision. You rarely hear me talk this strongly about anything other than our mission. And the reality is this is our mission. It's our mission to create a, a, a safe and healthy environment for our children. It's our mission to create a safe and healthy environment for each other. Many people have chosen to get this vaccination and I'm hoping that you will join me in getting the vaccination. I'm hoping that you will join the leadership team Ms. Marion, thank you for serving as an example. Mr. Tom, thank you for being included in the evening message. These are folks who are saying, not only have I done it, but I'm gonna share with my colleagues, people that I love and work with, that I've done the right thing, not just to protect myself, but to protect the people I love around me. I know it's a strong message and I intend it to be. So I hope you will deeply, deeply consider getting the vaccination. It's become widely available. Here's the thing. If you have concerns, we can talk about them. If you have very specific reasons from a healthcare professional, your doctor, that would identify that you would be at risk to do so, but those are extremely rare situations. I've spent a lot of time recent researching this. And again, I know I've said it a bunch of times, we have an obligation to keep our families safe. I'm going to move on because there were some questions that came in. And I wanna start by saying that these are good questions. I think many of you already know the answers to this. And I want to thank you for bearing with me. These are questions that we have been in COVID long enough that if you have had them, I want you to be able to approach your supervisors and not wait for an event like this, because these are important things to know. We have a question about what do we do when a parent tests positive? Can a child come to school? If they can't come to school, how long do they need to stay home? Do they need a negative COVID test or a doctor's note to return? 
Does the classroom close? Who's informed right away once the parents has first reported their positive test? Well, let's begin with this. The child cannot come to school. The child must quarantine. The parent tests positive, the child must quarantine. We're doing our best to encourage families to get the vaccinations so that they're protected, that their child is protected, that their loved ones are protected, and so that their child can come to school and not lose any more time. If the child has a relative or a friend that she or he can stay with while the parent is ill, the child's gonna quarantine for 14 days. That's our protocol. If the child can't stay with someone else while the parent is ill, the child is gonna be unable to come to school while the parent is ill, and then the quarantine will begin. So what this means is that a child could lose up to 24 days of school let's say 10 days or so while the parent is ill, and then another 14 days of quarantine after. Each of you know what that loss is for a child. We've seen what's happened during the virtual. It's just, it's time for us to do the right thing by also helping our families do the right thing. Our children, any child, can ill afford to lose 24 days or more of school, very simply put. If a parent is tested positive, the classroom isn't going to close because the parent hasn't been in the room within six feet of other children or staff for that 15 minute window or more. Although the child has been exposed, the child hasn't tested positive. So other children have not been directly exposed to the virus. We can make that work, and we're doing so to make sure that people are safe. The family advocate needs to be informed immediately when you learn of a parent testing positive so that the family advocate can support the family. We, we have to support our families. If we have a parent who tests positive, and they're going to lose two weeks worth of income going to work, or they're going to miss two weeks of school if they're in, in an educational program, we've got to do our best to support them. We've got to do our best. It's already been one heck of a year for all of us, but especially our families. So if you have knowledge, our family advocates need to know right away. If if you are staying within the guidelines that we have established, where the drop off and pick up with the parents is under 15 minutes, the time is minimized, that 15 minutes within six feet, you're not considered exposed to the virus. Those are guidelines that have been well established and because drop off and pick up is outside, that helps an awful lot. Here's a really, really important point. If you're vaccinated and you've been exposed to someone with COVID-19, you don't have to quarantine. I'm gonna repeat that. If you are vaccinated, and if it's a two-step vaccination, that first one offers a high degree of protection, but you've got to get both. There's a reason they have two. If you are vaccinated and you are exposed to someone who has COVID-19, you don't have to quarantine, folks. That's a very, very important consideration in your own lives, and it's a very important consideration in the fulfillment of our mission. I'm gonna move and turn this over to Jessica for the next question. Thank you guys for listening. I'll be back in a minute.
Hi there. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you all online. Um, so the next question we have is if someone tests positive, how long do they have to wait to receive the COVID vaccination if they want to get it? Is it necessary for them to get the vaccine since they already have COVID? So the answer, short answer is yes. We're taking this information straight from the CDC. You should be vaccinated regardless of whether you already have had COVID-19. That is because the experts do not yet know exactly how long you are protected from getting sick again after your recovery from COVID-19. Even if you have already recovered from COVID-19, it is possible, although rare, that you could be infected with the virus that causes COVID-19 again. So again, the answer to this question is yes. You should go ahead and get the vaccine if you have already had COVID. So getting COVID-19 does offer some natural protection, which we know is immunity. And the current evidence that we have suggests that reinfection with the virus that causes COVID is uncommon in the 90 days after the initial infection. That is what the experts are seeing. However, they do not know 100% for sure how long the protection lasts and the risk of severe illness and death from COVID far outweighs any benefits from natural immunity. So the COVID-19 vaccination will help you by creating an antibody in your immune system response without having to experience the actual sickness. If you are treated for COVID-19 with monoclonal antibodies or a convalescent plasma, you should wait 90 days before getting the COVID-19 vaccination. Please be sure that you are conferring with your doctor if you are unsure what treatments you received or if you have more questions about getting the vaccine. It is super important that you are conferring with your doctor as you take these steps. So the next uh, question that we have are related to the scrubs. We are required to wear scrubs that are button, snap, or zippers. I have seen staff wearing pullovers. Has this rule changed? No, the rule has not changed. We have instructed staff to purchase button, snap, or zippered scrubs, so they would not be pulling on contaminated clothing over their heads when they're taking it off and potentially infecting vulnerable areas, such as your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. So again, the rule has not changed. It is still the same because we want to make sure that all of our protocols are minimizing the risk as much as possible in getting contaminated clothing into those vulnerable areas. So Philip is now going to answer the last question for us. Thanks, Jessica. Um, supervisors, if you have anybody who's got the pullover, um, let's address that. We want everyone to have the right uh, scrubs. If somebody inadvertently got the wrong ones, we'll figure that out. That's not a problem. Um, just think about that, though. If you're pulling it over and you've got that exposure to your mouth, your nose, those areas, um, we want to be able to keep everyone safe. So here's a tough one, you guys. Philip, what if yeah. you've had vaccinations? Pardon? What what if you have had both of your vaccinations? Can you wear the pullover then? I will get an answer on that. So, okay, thank so you. Thank you for asking the question. Um, I can tell you one thing that we will need. Uh, so here's what we do. We work really closely with the public health department. And every time we've got a case, a positive case, a potential exposure questions like this, we communicate with the health department because these are folks who have so much knowledge and they guide us. And I can tell you one thing, if they say, yep, you can wear the pullovers, um, then what we're gonna do is to just make sure that we know that we have proof of your vaccination. 
um, so that we're making sure that the agency is doing the right thing. But we will get that question answered and we'll send an email out to everybody on it. Thank you, it's a great question. So here's a tough one. Um, Two-year-olds and up have to wear masks. We know that it can be a huge struggle to have the children keep them on, especially when they are um, uh, uh, the only one in the class having to wear a mask. So the deal is there are some instances where you may have that two-year-old and they're the only one, but in most instances for the twos and up, you're gonna have more than one or a majority of the kids wearing masks. They can have difficulty. It's that fine motor skill, putting on the mask themselves. And so the teachers throughout the day have to help keep the mask on that child. Are there suggestions on how to handle the situation? Absolutely. We have invested in this organization in having a position that you all know as the early childhood development specialists. Some of you have been here for a long time. I can think about someone whose smiling face I see every day, Miss Connie. She's been here 18 years. He remembers, and many of you remember, before we had the benefit and the resource of our early childhood development specialists. Talk to your early childhood development specialist. Talk to your supervisor. There are strategies for the successful management of that situation. We are doing our best to protect each other and our children. We all wanna be on the other side of this. What we've been doing throughout this pandemic is our very best to control risk. Electrostatic fathers, changing out air conditioning systems, putting in UV lights, having UV wands, deep cleaning, following protocols, login sheets for contact tracing. We've taken many, many steps. Are they perfect? As far as I know, nope. Are we doing our best? As far as I know, yes. The one thing that each of us can do to move us as rapidly as possible to the other side of this situation is the vaccination. Just can't emphasize it enough. We each have individual choice and on behalf of the leadership team, our hope is that you will exercise that choice in a way that's responsible not only to yourself, but everyone else. Those are the questions that we have at this point. Um, we're going to move on uh, to something a little bit less serious and a lot more joyful. Um, we're going to be talking about our 60th anniversary, and I am going to ask Jessica to come back into uh, view and talk with you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much, Philip. Uh, so wanted to give a, a couple of updates on where things are with the 60th anniversary. I want to give some super shout outs to our staff wellness committee, to our policy council, to our philanthropy team, uh, and my fellow colleagues on the leadership team, Kathleen and Philip, um, for everyone's input and support as we continue to find wonderful ways to celebrate our 60th anniversary. I uh, wanted to share with you guys and remind you that every year we have our biggest fundraising event around this time. And this year we're having our virtual slash hybrid fairy tale ball. It's going to be taking place this Saturday, April 10th, virtually. And each of you, if you're checking your emails on Saturday morning, uh, you will, in your uh, work emails, you will be receiving a special link so that you as members key members of our children first family can watch this special event virtually with us we hope that you will join us the event does not begin until 7 p.m saturday evening and so you won't be able to view it until then but you will have the link 
to settle in in your PJs and your finest uh, weekend apparel, whatever it is, uh, your choice. So you can enjoy that evening with us. And I wanna give a special shout out to all of those that are volunteering with us on our staff and a huge shout out to the philanthropy team, uh, to uh, Linda and Sam and Megan and Alyssa and Evan for all of their hard work and helping to make this special evening possible. Um, and all of this is to support our private fundraising efforts for our children and families. And you've heard about the announcement that we made with our big challenge match, the challenge for changing lives, our $1,060,000 uh, gift initiative. All gifts made the, uh, Saturday night toward the gala will be matched by the special group of individuals. So it's a huge, huge evening for us and a huge e evening for in support of our children and families. And we want to hear your input. So I'm going to give a big shout out to Mr. Ryan Scott. Um, and if you guys are able to use your chat boxes, I'm going to ask you um, a couple of questions. And you can continue just to type in the chat through your leisure as uh, Philip and I continue with Leadership Live. But we want to hear your quotes and how you feel about the 60th uh, anniversary. What does your time spent with children first mean to you? That's the first question. So if you feel comfortable and wanna type it in the chat box, what does your time spent with children first mean to you? And the second one is, what is one children first memory that you would like to share with everyone? So what is one children first memory you would like to share with everyone? So Mr. Ryan's gonna be taking notes and we would love to share this with each other uh, throughout the rest of the year. Um, it's possible we will be able to have some other activities uh, where we would like to share the quotes directly from you as the key leadership of our Children First family. So put them in the chat box right now. We'll read those quotes out later. We'll share them in uh, leadership team emails and we'll share them in other places. We wanna know your favorite memories and we wanna know what does it mean to you to be a part of the Children First family. So I'm going to move on. We've got a few, uh, actually a lot of accolades to share with you. We've had some very good news. Um, I know many of you read uh, the local magazines and SRQ Magazine has had something they call the annual best of SRQ every single year for the past 13 years. This year we shared with you a few months ago that Children First was nominated in a record six categories for the best of SRQ. I am super, super pleased to share with you that we have placed in all six categories and we have won the top spot in five out of six of those categories. We have swept the best of SRQ awards and I'm gonna read those awards to you right now. So Children First was a platinum winner for best children's nonprofit. Woohoo! We know that, right? We are the best. We were the platinum winner for best nonprofit leader, Philip Tabble. We were the best platinum winner for best organization to provide COVID-19 support. And we were also the platinum winner for best nonprofit to adapt. I want to pause right there for a second because best organization to provide COVID-19 support, best nonprofit to adapt. These are members of our community that voted, that actually nominated Children First for all six of these awards. And members of the community voted Children First as a top organization being the best to adapt and the best to provide COVID-19 support. What does that mean? It means that our community has noticed our immense efforts to do the best that we can for our children, for our families, for ourselves in support of each other and for the community because we have members of the community in normal times that are with us every single day at all 15 of our locations. So these are really truly meaningful awards because it means the community recognizes us as the leaders 
in our community and taking charge and addressing situations when they arise and providing the example to others. So I cannot emphasize that enough. We were the platinum winner for best preschool and silver for best local nonprofit. I have to say the platinum winner for best local nonprofit was Nathan's Animal Rescue. So the puppies got a top notch there too. So I can't be mad at the puppies, but I wanna just say how proud we are and how thankful we are for the work that you do every day to help us be the best for our children and families and how proud we are that our community has recognized us in this way. No other organization was nominated for this many awards. No other organization has won this many awards voted on by the community. Over 70,000 votes were cast, a record in the 13 years that they have had this awards program. And think about how many thousands of those were cast for children first. So our community is saying, we're behind you, we are proud of you, and you are the leader. So congratulations to each and every one of you. We are gonna share that information and those links so you can see it if you have not already seen it. And I have one more very big accolade to share. We all know that we received national recognition four time consecutive designation, one of only two in the nation as a Head Start program of excellence to receive that consecutive notation four times. Well, Children First now has another national award to add under its belt. So Children First has been named by the Nonprofit Times as one of the top 50 nonprofit organizations to work for in the entire country. Woo! Go us, go us. This was for the best nonprofits to work for competition. It is the first time we are being recognized in, in this national sphere. We are so, so proud to have this recognition. Nonprofits across the country were competing in this two-part competitive process that you participated in. 40% of staff responses required in order to be able to make it for even a review in this competition. We had just over 60% of our staff respond. That is huge. Thank you all that participated to provide your feedback and information so that Children First could be a contender for this amazing, amazing recognition. And now we are placed in the top 50. I see that, Miss Marie. Way to go, Children First. Again, so proud of each and every one of you. We are so proud to work alongside you every single day. And let's super celebrate this recognition because it is a reflection of everyone's work and everyone's commitment to be our best together. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Philip so that he can share um, some light and bright solar messages with you. All right. Thank you, Jessica. And thanks for all of you. I know that um, uh, many of you voted uh, in the SRQ uh, Best Of. And we're grateful for that. Uh, also, um, over 60% of you responding to the Nonprofit Times in that anonymous survey, um, that's huge. And we're deeply grateful for that. Let me tell you what that makes it easy to do. This past year during COVID, all of us were able to stay employed, gainfully engaged by children first. All of us. When in the first month, month and a half of COVID, over 20 million people lost their jobs. We stayed committed to mission. For those of you who are 10 month and 11 month employees, teachers, educators, we were able to keep you on for the summer so that you didn't fall off, your family didn't fall off a financial cliff. We kept everybody, 10 and 11, 12 month employees on. We worked really hard to be able to do that. 
because we know that each and every one of us works every hard, every single day, excuse me, works hard every single day to make sure we can do the best for our children, our families, and for each other. I like to think of it as we are shining our light, our joy, our happiness on each other. That's my way of telling you about a little project that we call Bringing Sunshine to Children First. Over the years at some of our sites, we've been able to install solar hot water panels for our kitchens. And that's allowed us to reduce the amount of electricity or gas that we need for hot water for the dishwashers and other things. And it's been really great. We are a part of an initiative called Partners for Green Places that's funded by the foundations. And initially, they invested in our Northport site, whoop, whoop, Northport, so that we could replace some of the air conditioners. We could take some steps to reduce our water usage, weather stripping, all sorts of things that helped us become more efficient, spend less money on utilities, keep more money to mission. The most recent project, some of you have seen it, is bringing sunshine to the Merib Center. Through the Partner for Green Places evaluation, they determined that the Merib Center was our best bet to put solar photovoltaic panels on that will generate electricity for this site. 286 panels are currently being installed on the roof at the Merib Center that will, on certain days when the conditions are just right, provide 100% of the electrical needs of this building. Here's what's really cool about this. Number one, half of that has been funded by a very generous grant. The foundation said, we're going to pay for 50% of it. The other half, they gave to us as a loan with a 1% interest rate for 20 years. And we did the calculations, and even with just a small amount as 1%, we are going to be many dollars ahead every year because of us bringing sunshine to children first. We never rest. We're always pushing forward. We're always making sure that we can do our best for our children. We're always making sure that we can do our best for our families. We're always doing our best that we can make sure we're helping each other because it's hard work and I know that. And I wanna finish with this. I'm gonna come back to the vaccinations for just one minute. We miss our volunteers and they miss us. And we want the volunteers to come back. Many of them, I know you know, are elderly. Many of them that I know have had their vaccinations. But until we have our staff vaccinated, it's going to be very difficult for us to let volunteers back into the building. Because unlike a parent drop off or a parent pickup, they're with us for more than 15 minutes at a time. When I talk to the volunteers and they say how much they miss you guys as teachers, family advocates, here's what they tell me when I thank them for everything that they're doing for our children, for our agency. They say, no, 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 Philip. It's what we get out of it. What we do, well, we feel good about it, but what the volunteer experience brings to us is just so overwhelmingly beautiful and meaningful. And I'm telling you guys that many of you know it. I'm telling you that because we are extraordinarily fortunate to have a committed volunteer base that wants to help us love our children and families. 
the closer we get to that 100% vaccination, the closer we get to having our volunteers come back in and loving on our kids, loving on our staff, and going out and telling the message of children first. Jessica's left the room, so I'm gonna take this off for her. Here's the message that they take out. The message that they take out is that we're one of the top 50 places in the United States with nonprofits to work for. They take out that locally, we're the best children's nonprofit, that we're the best preschool, that we were the best to adapt, that we were the best to provide COVID services. Here's what all of these things mean. It means that each of you have a deep commitment to mission. It means that each of you have a deep commitment to each other. It means that each of you love our children and love our families. It means that all of us together share in the joy of the successes. I see some of the comments coming in, some of the memories, and it's extraordinarily moving. I will tell you, I feel very, very, very privileged to be a part of this Children First family. I know the messaging is tough this morning. I know how hard I'm pushing on the vaccinations. It's tough decisions. We haven't faced something like this ever. And I'm appreciative of your willingness to listen. I'm appreciative of your willingness to consider. But most of all, leadership team, I speak on their behalf the governance, the board, the policy council, I speak on their behalf when I tell you that the work that we do each and every day, the work that we have done over the last year, it just, it couldn't be better. If you don't have a sense of pride about that, grab a hold of it. It's not a false pride, it's a true pride. And it's something that with all humility, we should each know individually and collectively that we are a part of a very, very special organization fulfilling a very, very special mission. We hope you guys have a really good day. I think there's some great things lined up. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. Rest and relax. We'll be having the gala. Jessica shared, I believe, that the link will be shared with each of you. If you want to hear me drone on a little bit more Saturday night, you can tune in. You might not recognize me. I'll be wearing a tie and a suit jacket. You guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for everything that you do. Have a wonderful in-service day. Take care and bye-bye.